Good morning. It's Tuesday in Jacksonville, Florida. Still waiting for... It's unbelievable. There's a red light. I know there is. One of those calls. Well, our storm has not moved itself yet, but hopefully it's going to be 100 miles out into the ocean, so maybe the weather will remain the way it is, which is... Uh, partly sunny, a little breeze, occasional drop or two of rain. But due to all of this craziness, especially the descriptions of uh, over the weekend, uh, I made my first serious uh, mistake. I obliterated a video before it was uh, downloaded and uploaded. So I've decided that uh, I would do a similar thing to share it with you, but first, uh, I would show you what was uh, what was lost. The last time you saw this, we saw white. You saw white paper in here, and so now I'm going to go through the steps of working on that white paper uh, to produce this effect. And this is oh, isn't the light nice? This is showing. A layer of uh, Derwent ink tents and uh, moved with a little bit of a mixture of gesso and water which I will show you and then I went to my Prismacolors on top of that and I got that beautiful uh, waxed shiny uh, effect and it was just uh, it was a fun video and uh, I just sent it into the ether things happen in over 500 videos I guess I should uh, forgive myself. And then on this side, I shared this uh, uh, decision I made about uh, the closure for this envelope. I thought and thought, I had good think, and then I decided, well, <sighs> there's another unknown. And so, I cut two strips about oh, almost a half inch apart, um, maybe a little less, in this top flap. And as you can see, that's the, um, the piece of uh, seam binding. And then I put a, uh, a card down inside to keep this, uh, to keep myself from accidentally cutting into the front and I did the same thing here and I um, used a needle and just uh, pushed the uh, seam binding through, uh, tied it off here, there's the knot, tied this one off and I have a, um, a closure which uh, makes me, which makes me quite tickled. All of this, as I said, should have been coming to you today, but things happen. So, let me go on now to this. I chose this as my piece of uh, example for you. So here, this is going to go on this side. This piece of my own, uh, uh, an art, a page of mine from a uh, chopped journal is going to go on the back. It can be used as a journaling spot because a black pen will go right over this. And so I uh, just use my X-Acto and I cut this flower out here and now I'm going to uh, go through the process that I went through on the other one. But before we do that, uh, I'm going to use this um, square, short um, chisel blender. Uh, and it is a number eight, and it is a uh, Princeton. And I am going to, uh, I'm going to have, we're going to have a look and see what these colors are. Well, that's a quite dark purple. 
This is a little bit of a redder purple. Oh, isn't that pretty? Here we go. This is a bluish purple. All righty. Now, so let's use one of those one of those uh, nice sharp semi sharp uh, Derwent ink tents and put the outline down in here now I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, change the, sh the, uh, the design just a little bit to, uh, to suit all we need. And here we'll do this one. And then we will do that one. So nothing terrible can happen now because uh, it's going to be blended in with the, uh, with the ink tents when I work on it. So this can go aside now, and I cut out one of my uh, dollar store um, cutting, cutting boards. I love these things and use them, I have used them, and uh, every time that I use them for something like this, I'm, uh, I'm happy with them. Just the tiniest amount of gesso for a project this size. That's enough. Water handy, paper towel, and let's uh, let's apply our colors. So, I need um, we need a good dark. We need a good dark down here on this one. Nice and dark to give us that uh, that color and shape, and then maybe a little bit more of that up in here on this one. And oh, out this way. Out this way. And maybe, uh, maybe up in here a little bit, and just in this one, just a smidge. Um, let's see about, uh, let's see about this one. And a little bit here, just a tiny bit. And let's bring some flower shapes down here, up the side, this one is, this one's underneath so it would be a little bit dark so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, add a little on that side, and a little here. And a little bit more here and along this side. I'm not sure about whether I'm going to want that one. Let's now come back and add. I'm doing my best with these shades of purple. They will not exactly match that, of course. Let's have some of this in here, a little bit more in here, and a goodly amount here and here. And a fill-in, a 
let's fill in here. And in this, in this dark place here. And up in there. And this edge again. And there. And let's work a little bit of it into this one. And just a bit here. Now, this is the amount that I have used. And I have, uh, those of you who have been watching my videos for a long time know that I often use this. Now, this part is important. You must use very little with the gesso because the gesso really makes magic with um, Derwent's. Very, very little. Let's, uh, let's go up here now. I think I'm going to even try to get you closer. begin. Now this brush has the short bristles and I can use it for uh, scrubbing in some color. Literally scrubbing in some color because the uh, wetness the wetness will uh, and the white of the gesso will work in our favor. Get a little bit more, tiny bit more water. Tiny bit more water. Very little. That's too wet. We use it, dry some off. And let's go here and bring this down. Scrub the colors in to get the lines out. And go outside the lines, that's okay. Next one, start here and scrub our colors on. And when this dries, this will not move. It's about 90% forever with Derwent's. lightness on the edge there. A little more lightness over here. And let's do this one. Let me scrub this dark into it. And I use the uh, side of the brush like a wedge to move that uh, Derwent. white there too. More white there. A little bit more white here. Dry brushing. Now let's get let's get this one. One has some blue in it. I call it blue, it's blue violet. Now let's scrub that one on. Come over here and scrub this one down. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit of uh, water. Now, 
I'm going to uh, get the gesso out of this brush. And you can see how very little gesso was used. And I'm going to set that aside because water play is over. And let's see what we have here. Is it happening? Okay, but, okay, 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 not so okay. Let me, uh, let's, uh, let's do some more coloring in there. Yes, we will. Okay, I'm just gonna put some around the edges and go outside the lines. I was too diligent with my lines. Let's go outside the lines here. And color these. And scrub them, actually. Scrub these lines in. Do we need more? Let's check. Okay, I want a little more. And this is the result of the uh, the way I cut it with the X-Acto knife. That's the only... That's the reason for this little exercise. Oops. Yes, we need some more. Right here. Right here. And... This can be a little bit fuller. Now, back to the brush and... Okay, let's... Uh... Let's scrub outside the lines here a little bit so that we're definitely uh, so that we're definitely covered in there, and then we can pull down in and go back over with uh, with some gesso. Let's get this scrubbed in first. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And I remember I put some down here, so let's do that. Now this is not going to move because it's drying, and Derwent doesn't like that. So, okay, now I'm going to dry brush with some uh, white to put the white back on here. Oh, it doesn't go down that far. Don't get carried away, Carol. did that bit, but that's fixable. Now when we do this, when this dries and we do it with Prisma, we're going to be putting back some of these colors that I have managed to uh, take away. Dry enough yet. Are you dry enough yet? And 
this one should have more under because it's underneath. Okay. That one needs a little bit more under. So let's, uh, let's pull some of that out here. Just scrub out some more. To it. Get the gesso out of the way. Now I'm going to uh, dry this and I'm going to let the, uh, the good times roll here with the Prisma colors. Keep that as a, uh, a suggestion. But let's check. Let's see if we got things taken care of here. Yes, we did. Okay. Yes. So, let's have white Prisma. Lavender. Where's Parma? And focus with our Parma Violet. There's Parma. Best color ever invented anywhere, anytime. I think, I think we'll stop there. Yes, is this dry enough? I think so. not a hundred percent so I'm going to dry this and come back and we're going to go to uh, round two. Oh, by the way this is just card card stuff that will go through my uh, printer okay now this is just a hint so let's go with Prismacolor uh, Violet and truck noises outside Alrighty. I'm working in this section right here. And I do small, small circles. Yes, I'm going to have to stop because uh, our uh, yard man is here. I'll be back when quiet ensues. Well, I'm enjoying the sound of silence again. Just trying to get in the bones of the coloration here. See that uh, waxy shine from the Prismacolor? There it is. And
just a little bit of darkness on the edges. So we'll put it in now. And all right. Let's go now to. Let's go now to this one. This is my very favorite of all the Prismas. This is the Parma. And let's get some color here. And some in here. And a little bit coming down and a little bit coming this way. Yes, we go. And around this shape here. go. See that effect? Okay. Now let's get the big guns going. Okay. It's gone forever. Forever. <laughs> okay. I'll make believe that that it didn't completely disappear. Okay, and this is... Um, Lavender. Run that right down into the dark, into the darker colors. And let's bring those together as much as possible. And leave a little space on this one for another color. Let's bring it down. And I'm thinking It is. Where is it hiding? Just want to put 
just ever so little of that, a touch of that in here. And this is a process red. See where we are for the moment. Now let's let the magic happen. White is the great burnisher. to uh, lay down our lights. The difference is uh, Process red worked in. And of course, as in anything, watercolor, acrylic, when you want darkness to show, you add light next to it. And it makes its very own magic. Work in this process red now. I think I'm going to declare that a mission accomplished. Can you see the wax coloration? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I think it's time to rethink the outer edge of this white card before this is applied. Yes, let's see what I can what we can do here. I'm thinking this might need bit of milled lavender. Let's make up our minds. Let's 
make up our minds. Or seedless seedless preserves. No, too pink. Too pink. Get that pink out of there. How about wilted violet? Um betcha. Oh, yes. We can do that. Now, just a little bit. And I'm going to my very favorite, favorite, because I can't help myself with this one. I just cannot. Just the tiniest, whoopsie daisy, just the tiniest little smidge. Just let's move down and around. Let's see if this is happy making. Okay. I'm going to bring up a little more. Call for a little stays on royal purple around the edges. little bit of darkness.
behind on here. I use a ruler on the edges. the back also. Going to do the edges first. And around around the uh, carry it away, Carol. Well, when you don't have waxed paper, and this on the back. needs to be and let's do it. So now here
this is going to be the tie. And this little one. This little one is going to go here. up. Yes, it is. And I'm going to call that the middle. I'm going to call that the middle. And I'm going to do one on top of it. Let's just go a smidge, smidge, smidge further. Okay. And then one up above it. didn't want to uh, do that, but and there it is. And here it is. Actually, a good knot. Let's see if it's flat in the back. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. just going to do what it wants to do. Well, all right now. There. So, I do hope you have enjoyed uh, seeing the process. Ah, there you go. That's better. That uh, I followed in order to get that one. And now we have this one. So, I do hope that you have enjoyed seeing this process and the possibilities uh, that are quite endless uh, with starting out with Inktense pencils and then switching to Prismacolor and then the, uh, the finisher is that white, that white Prisma for burnishing which cannot be equaled. And so, 
Now, I feel a little better because of my horrible mistake, but I do hope that you will consider giving me a uh, thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, and I would so appreciate your subscribing to my channel. Now, let's just get this nice and close. Okay, come on camera. And I'm going to bring this over here so that you can see. Just enough waxiness in that uh, Prisma pencil to, uh, to achieve that. By now, 